All right, good Sunday morning. I am just going to take a video of, first of all, all the imperfections and good things <laughs> that are about my E30 Touring. This is, and uh, it's not really focusing very easily. Sorry, I'm just trying to work this camera for the first time. Um, it's a 1990, uh, this is a 325 E30 chassis. Oh, let's get another shot from here, from, from this angle. Alright. Just going to give a basic overview first off. Okay, some focus again. And walking out here. Uh, spider webs. This isn't going to be a great video. I'm sorry. Okay. So here I'll start going into some of the bigger details. Um, the first thing that I want to go over is clear coat. Um, so I'll show you the clear coat peeling that is on the vehicle. Um, so this right here is the first section. Um, a clear coat that has started to peel. Uh, this is the second section here. Uh, a bit easier to see. I have one point here and then move here and then I have one peel that is here. Um, it's slowly starting to peel in this section here. Um, I feel like that will take some time before it kind of builds in anything deeper but it nonetheless I still want to show it. Get another focus point of that. Then over here on the door, driver's door is where it is. So there's a better description of it. Um, it kind of slowly peters off into this section and then as well to on top, uh, right, yeah, right in this area here. Um, okay. The next thing that I wanted to show you, Peter, was this scratch. I'm worried, I'm gonna see if I can try and get it. There you go. That's a little bit of an identification of it. It's just in the clear coat, but it is still something that I feel um, I need to kind of explain to you. Let's see if I can get a better focus point of it. This camera is having a hard time trying to see a lot of the focus with the shine. Um, but yeah, so it starts right from here and it continues along and it peters out in this area right around here. So, you know, fairly, uh, there's a fairly long scratch, um, but again, I think it can be worked, worked upon. I just um, haven't invested more time into making that come out. Um, and I also explained that there's also two dents that are in the hood. Um, so you can see, oh, it's gonna be a tough one to, to see. It's in this area here, I'll see if I can get it. Yeah, there you go, you can kind of see it in the light. There you go. Um, so yeah, those are two dents, or that's where the one that's there. And it seems like on this side there's a much smaller one, but it's a pretty decent scratch that's in because this seems like the same incident. Uh, yeah, come on, there we go, camera. Yeah, you can just kind of vaguely see it there and, and try and get that there. This is the front work that was done on the valence. You can see that there's a split right here because of where the undercoating had to be peeled back for when I straightened this out and then applied, um, yeah, essentially like straighten it out, put some filler on it and then uh, just to make it out. But as you saw in the photos, there's very, very little filler that's in place. Um, so yeah, that's in that section there. Uh, and then this is the fender that was repainted. Um, I'm not quite sure if you can see in the camera the difference in the color. Nah, it's not really evident from what I can see through the screen, but um, there is just a slight difference that's within it. But uh, nonetheless, it is still still kind of there. Um, and then in the back end too, I just want to just kind of show like there's you know there's some paint chips that are here that have been filled over. Um, again, like you stand back here, you know, it's hard to see them kind of thing. They're they're just small, but they're evident. Um, and then as well too, I wanted to show, this is where the rust spot is. Um, and that was in the ad. I tried to list that the best that I could. Uh, there we go. Um, it's just a little bit of a peel that's just right below. And you can see there's also these little pings that I've been trying to, I tried to fill up so they wouldn't was kind of show any signs of rust, but they're just from having an assortment of keys and then just hitting here. Pretty common on older cars. Um, valence looks good. Um, so then here in the back, uh, this area here was what I had painted. 
Let's see if I can get a better focus point. I had painted, uh, and that in itself, I feel, has turned out pretty good. Um, then I'll open the hatch and I'll show you some of the more details of this area. All right, yeah, I'll put it like this. So in here, there's a tool kit. Um, I also have a rag just in case I need to check oil and such, but um, they have a jack system here. There's a first aid kit, so there's some gloves set up, and then that connects into there. And you can see this is just kind of from overnight being laying like that. Um, but there are little tabs that are on here, and those are not on either side anymore. Um, they're just things that can typically break. Um, on this side here, you can see that there's a cubby space. Uh, that is, you can see there's no rust or anything in there. It's, it's, it's really clean in that regard. Um, over here, there's some grill covers. I'm sure you can find replacements of those, but these ones have started to show some sign of age. Um, I'll show you the spare tire as well. So here, just have a, a bottle cap with um, a Uniroyal tire that's on it. It looks completely original. Uh, everything in that manner seems the same. Um, and then I wanted to show you what some trim pieces that are starting to fail. Um, so as you can see, this is a trim piece that's here that comes along uh, and then connects in. And on this side, it had got a, a hit in this area right here. Yeah, right in that area. Um, and it is caught. And so basically, when it was pulled off or so. There's a tab that's underneath here uh, that has broken off. Uh, I don't know if I can finally wear it. Uh, it's hard to show, but anyway, it, it tabs right in here. You can see on this bottom piece. You can glue that back on. I just felt like I did not want to go that step uh, in case you wanted to remove it for anything. I'm not quite sure what, but I just felt like that's one of the precautions I wanted to take uh, just so that the, uh, the new owner could see that, um, yeah, essentially I'm not trying to hide anything. Close that there. So up here, the headliner, you can see there's a little bit of sag that's in the center. I feel like that will last quite a bit of time though without any con any, any troubles. Um, we'll go in the back seat now. Uh, make sure the door doesn't hit. So, as, so these are the seats, generally in pretty good shape. Uh, nothing really all that uh, concerning on that end. Underneath here, I'll do the other side. Looks pretty good. Underneath here, everything's kind of as you would expect it. Um, decent shape for this car. I apologize again about the camera aspects, but some of the beautiful things about the touring, um, some of the like ingenious designs that will just last forever. Some of the, these tabs. So basically, these tabs you want to remove the seat. You just squeeze those, and it basically pulls those pins, and then you can pull the seat out. It's a beautiful setup, and I'm one-handed right now, so I won't do it, but. Um, yeah, this goes here, and then when you want to get the seat down, there's a beautiful lever here. It works and fresh as the day that it came from the factory, it feels. I push that, and then, pardon my reach, I'll use the camera. And then this comes down, and then you can take the headrest off, and then it will all go into place. This little tab here connects into this piece here, and it's, it's really quite secure. Anyway, I'll close that up. I come into the driver's area. There's um, there's a little bit of uh, stitching that has started to fray and um, has started to separate on the driver's seat. The passenger seat, seat is perfect. Sorry, I have it elevated as high. I was vacuuming under the seat the last time that was here. But uh, but yeah, you can see. Um, I'll see if I can get a better focus point. Um, yeah, it's like just barely starting to show some signs of, of wear, but you know, to be honest, um, I just feel like most owners would like just to see this in good shape, but we'll probably replace these seats with sports seats as they really just, these seats don't do the car justice. Um, MTech 1 steering wheel, uh, and then you can see, oh, let's go in and sit, the door card's in great shape, uh, everything on them is working as they should. Um, Alright, so here we come, glove box. You can see here the handles often break. I've had to replace this one, um, but anyway, that, that connects up. They're a little bit sticky. Uh, here is the section of crack in the dash. You can see that just go there. It's quite small, but it will get larger as you leave the vehicle in the sun and age because they're quite stretched. I have an original stereo system that's in this car. Um, it's not from this vehicle directly when I purchased it, but I have purchased it for period correct application. Okay, the car has now been started in two days. Um, so these are some of the aspects that I want to show. 
Um, so the kilometers on this um, panel here show 314,735. That is that is not correct. Uh, the previous owner had put a different gauge cluster in after um, his batteries, uh, uh, the IS batteries, I believe they're called, had died in the TAC, uh, which meant um, he just wanted to replace it. So he got one that had incorrect mileage. I do have um, the gauge cluster uh, originally for this vehicle, um, and based off of the calculations, it's the vehicle has somewhere around 200 and I think a little over 223 or 24,000, sorry, 223, 224,000 kilometers on the body. Uh, the engine is somewhere around, uh, I believe, the 210,000 mark, somewhere in that margin. Um, anyway, so relative to this, uh, just one more thing before it gets loud in here. I'd just love to show that I don't see any, any oil leaks on the ground. The car's been sitting for two days. I just had to wash the wheels, but I don't think there's any water here. Yeah, it's a bit hard to tell, but there there isn't any oil leaks from what I can see underneath the vehicle. Um, <laughs> sorry, a bad example. I just have washed the wheels so that you do see a bit of water that's there. And but I can put a piece of cardboard under and send a photo afterwards if that's something that you would like to see. Um, okay. So uh, here goes the car. This is a cold start. Those shifter bushings are really quite tight, I uh, replaced all of them. Uh, it's an, unfortunately, I don't have a period correct shifter knob that's on it, but that's just what it goes on. All right, so turn this on. So right off the bat, you have uh, all your, the auxiliary lights that are working correctly. Um, you have a, um, your check light that's here, and if you look up to the top, um, that is for brake lights. Um, and as soon as you hit the brake, it turns it off. It's just basically a checking method so that you just have that understanding that that is what's going on. And I'm going to start the car. And as you can see, everything on the vehicle works as it should. rev it any more than that as it's cold and has been sitting for a while. So here we go to the engine bay, quite clean, uh, also repainted. I've done a lot of work relative to making that come together in that way. Um, let's come around to this side here. All right, so here's where the magic happens. Runs quite smooth. Uh, when it's warm, I feel there's a little bit of a vacuum leak somewhere, um, as it has a, sometimes a little bit of a rough idle, but it's really, as soon as you get on the throttle on the slightest format, it just completely eliminates that. So yeah, I, I have a feeling that it's something either vacuum related or maybe something with a plug wire, I'm not, I'm not totally sure. But it runs smooth enough for me just not to feel like it's that much of a bother. So, Runs really smoothly. Has great power in the areas that it needs to. It feels like any stock M20 that I've ever felt. As well too, on this end. It seems, yeah, I mean, it seems, smells a little bit rich, but honestly, it's really not something that I feel is too bad. Anyway, relative to this, I'm gonna stop the car now. I'm gonna go, I have uh, my E46 in the driveway that I need to move, and uh, then I can go for a drive. And just for future reference, this is, Basically what I'm selling this car for is to <laughs> install a pretty wild engine into my other Touring. Uh, this car I bought from the original owner and it means quite a bit. So anyway, thanks for tuning in and I will talk to you soon.